Good morning and welcome to Biology 102 Tea Time. I hope you've grabbed your caffeination. Um, today's lecture is going to extend from Mendel and give us a few new variations on Mendel. Now this slide that I have up um, is just reminding you of where we were with Mendel. So Mendel lived in the 18 sort of 60s, so like mid 1800s. Um, he's known as the father of modern genetics. He gave us the word gene um, and named um, this particular chemical that pass from parents to offspring but he also gave us some laws so you see over here we have the law of segregation um, that states that two alleles for the same trait segregate during gamete formation um, we knew this already because we know that gametes only have half of our chromosomes inside of like sort of each sperm and egg um, he also gave us the law of independent assortment um, that law says that alleles for different traits also segregate during gamete formation. So um, traits for like hair color and eye color would not stick together, but they're going to sort independent of one another into sperm and eggs. Now Mendel studied something called complete dominance. Um, and complete dominance is where you have two alleles, so two allele options for every trait. And one of those allele options is the dominant allele. And one allele is the um, recessive allele. So in order to show the dominant trait, you need at least one dominant allele. In order to show the recessive trait, you have to have two copies of that recessive in order to show it. Now Mendel is kind of interesting because Mendel studied something called complete dominance. Um, and so it was a very simple system with these two allele options, the dominant allele that is always shown if it's present and then the recessive allele that is hidden unless you have two copies of the recessive and then you show it. Um, and so this two kind of um, two clear cut ways to inherit a particular trait is actually kind of rare. So complete dominance in terms of being in humans is a little bit rare. And so today I wanna to talk about some ways that we break Mendel's rules. Um, and so this lecture is called Mendel's Variations or Variations on Mendel um, because these are ways that we go beyond what Mendel gave us. We extend that um, and into some sort of new uh, sort of territory. And so anything that isn't inherited outside of two clear cut ways with this dominant and recessive allele is going to be breaking Mendel's rules in some way. So today I wanna to look at that. There are a lot of different ways that we break Mendel's rules and I don't even have all of them up here. This is just gonna give you a smattering of ideas about how we like sort of vary Mendel's laws and Mendel's rules. And I've divided this into two parts. So we're gonna go all the way through part five um, or number five up here, polygenic inheritance. And then part two will cover the last um, bit of these variations. So let's get started with incomplete dominance. So incomplete dominance is the case where the heterozygote, right, that's where you have a capital letter and a lowercase letter, um, is an intermediate form between what Mendel would have called the dominant form and the recessive form. Over here in my sort of diagram, I show this with snapdragon. So this is a kind of flower. If you are homozygous red, you would show this red color for your snapdragon. If you are homozygous right, white, we write that small r, small small r and we would show this white color. Now if we breed purebred reds with purebred whites, we get 100% pink, this intermediate uh, color for the heterozygote. So you notice the heterozygote is one capital R, one lowercase r, and 100% of these heterozygote uh, states for the snapdragons are pink. And so this is an an expression that is a little different than what Mendel had. If we had Mendel, we would have red crossed with white and all of your heterozygotes would be red. You would be hiding that white. And so this is a way to get another option um, into the system that is a little bit different than what Mendel said. Now in humans, we see this with cholesterol receptors on the outside of the cell. This is an LDL, a low 
uh, density lipoprotein. Um, this is a gate that helps us take in LDL cholesterol and then process it. Um, if you are a normal person and can take LDL into your cells and use it, then we say that you are homozygous normal for creating these gates that allow you to take in that particular kind of cholesterol and then use it. If you are a heterozygous state, then it means you make half the number, number of a homozygous normal person, um, half the number of these gates on the outside, you'll have a mild case of having too much cholesterol in your bloodstream. Um, so it stacks up in the blood, it's not able to sort of come into that gate and then be processed and used. If you are homozygous for the inability to make these LDL receptors, then you won't make any on your um, cell surface. And this usually results in a severe uh, case of having too much cholesterol inside of your bloodstream. Your cells can't process and take it um, in. That is where we get this word hyper and then cholesterol. So too much cholesterol in your bloodstream. So this is a case for this incomplete dominance um, where the heterozygous uh, state is an intermediate state between what Mendel would have called the dominant and then the recessive or these two other options. Another way that we break Mendel's rules is in the case of codominance. Codominance is the case where we get two alleles like in our heterozygote, but this time those alleles are expressed equally. Um, this hap happens in some speckled in cases, so in like um, the speckled chickens that I showed on the first slide um, and some other livestock can have a speckled in pattern on them um, where you're showing two different alleles at once. If you have a dog with spotted gums, if you look inside of their mouths and kind of open up and see their gums, sometimes you'll see like black and pink um, and those are two different colors of gums and then if you have the heterozygote you can see sort of both of them. So you can see this spotted gum um, pattern. And then we also see this in blood type in humans, which I wanna talk about. Uh, blood type is a little bit more complicated than just codominance, but one piece of that uh, sort of complexity is a codominant pattern between blood type A and blood type B. Um, so, so far we have looked at complete dominance. That's where your heterozygote, you're gonna have the dominant allele hiding the recessive. We have incomplete dominance where the heterozygote state is an intermediate state like those pink snapdragons. And codominance where we have equal expression of the two alleles in our heterozygote. So a couple of different ways that we're sort of breaking Mendel's rules or mixing it up just a little bit so that um, it makes it more complex than what Mendel proposed. All right, I want to talk about multiple alleles. So something else that you might have noticed is that often there are more than two options for our alleles. Um, there are cases where you get more than two forms of a gene possible within a population. Think of things like eye color where you have a whole bunch of different options like you have blue and green and hazel and light brown and medium brown and dark brown and eye color is a little bit more complicated than this but you can see that there's all these different forms of this particular um, gene. Now a, an example of multiple alleles that we see in humans is our blood group so the ABO uh, blood type. Now what causes these blood types has to do with the sugar that is displayed on the outside surface of the red blood cell. So if you are A blood type over here on the table, then you will display a certain carbohydrate in a certain shape that we denote as A. Over here, we're showing it as little triangles, right? On the outside surface in a cartoon version, but um, something like this. If you are B blood type, you will display a different shape of a carbohydrate, different kind of carbohydrate that we're showing as little circles on our red blood cell. Now, when we get more than one option, so O down here at the bottom means that you do not produce any carbohydrate, right? So we have A, B, and O as our options um, for our like sort of phenotypes and here's the genotypes listed over here. Um, but what happens in multiple alleles where you throw in other possibilities, in this case we have kind of three primary um, possibilities, is then the alleles have to decide um, the inheritance pattern and each allele grouping can be a little bit different. So in multiple alleles, in this case, we have A and B and they are actually co-dominant to each other. So if you inherit A blood type or A carbohydrate from your mom and B from your dad, then you will actually display both kinds of carbohydrate
carbohydrates on the surface of your red blood cells. So you can see over here, we have little triangles, we have little circles, et cetera. Um, and so these two, A and B, would be said to be co-dominant to one another. However, A and B are completely dominant over O. So O is a recessive. So if you are O blood type, it means you have inherited an O from mom and an O from dad in order to display no sugars on the outside. If you look up here, if you are A and then you've inherited O or this small letter I, then you still display A on the surface. Or if you've inherited B and then O blood type, then you would display B over here in your carbohydrates. So A and B, are completely dominant over O. And so only if you are showing O, the only way to show O is to have like, um, you know, no A and B and to have a double recessive right here. So multiple alleles is the case where you have more than two options, right? More than two forms of the gene that are possible for you. All right, the last two complex inheritance patterns are pleiotrophy and polygenic inheritance. Um, these kinds of inheritances sound a little bit the same, and so students often mix them up. So just make sure you take a little bit of time um, to understand them. Um, pleiotrophy is the case where one gene impacts more than one character or trait inside of a human um, or any organism. So an example of this is sickle cell disease. Down here I have a picture of these puffy red beach balls. They carry oxygen so that we can do cellular respiration so that we can make energy ATP for our cells. We've discussed this in previous lectures. Um, sickle cell is actually a single mutation and that single mutation changes the shape of your red blood cell. And here, right here, we see this sickling shape and this sickled shape is interesting. Even though it's one gene that has changed, um, it causes not just this one shape change, but a whole cascade of problems. Um, so this one gene impacts more than one trait inside of us. Sickle cell disease can start with lethargy and weakness and things like that, but also pain and organ damage so that organs start to fail all the way up until systems are failing um, for individuals. So this one gene impacts more than one trait because it's impacting this huge Huge energy reaction that is so important for life. All right, the last complex inheritance pattern is polygenic inheritance. This is the case where we have two or more genes that impact a single phenotypic trait. I want you to imagine one of those old fashioned balances that you can kind of tip one way or the other by adding um, certain kinds of things on either side of the balance. Um, this is what's happening in polygenic inheritance often or how I visualize it is that more than two genes are weighing in on this final trait. Um, um, and they're having an influence or a say in what that final trait is going to look like or appear um, like um, or behave like inside of an organism. Over here, I have some examples. One of them is skin color. If skin color only had eight genes um, involved, then you would have 64 possibilities in uh, skin color. So it gets quite complicated quite quickly. But we think um, that there are about 378 you know, color genes that influence that final skin color inside of humans. If we were still in class, I would ask you to look around at your classmates and you would see that you don't all look the same, right? Your skin colors are quite different, even from individual to individual. Within 100 individuals, we wouldn't have identical skin color types, right? Um, and so this polygenic inheritance, again, these 378 regions and genes are like kind of weighing in on that final like sort of color and that final appearance of that trait. Eye color, we think there are 16 genes that weigh in on that final gene. Height, we think there's 424 regions um, that weigh in on your final like phenotypic uh, sort of height that you reach in your lifespan. So I've started out this lecture, Variations on Mendel, to show you a few ways that Mendel, um, the laws of Mendel and what Mendel proposed gets to be more complicated as we step outside of that one inheritance pattern and explore some other ways um, that we add some complexity to inheritance. So I'll see you next time.